Hi everyone, welcome back to another Wellness Wednesday. My name is Molly and I am the Wellness Supervisor here at Bertram Hills. So last week we spent a little bit of time talking about different ways to kind of stretch out and mobilize your back. And so I want to kind of piggyback off of that this week and talk a little bit more about some additional stretches that you can do to not only help with your back, but your lower extremities as well. One thing that not a lot of people know, like if you're not you know, overly engaged in exercise and fitness, is that basically just because you have a pain somewhere doesn't mean that that's where the problem is, so to speak. So a good example of this, when we get sometimes hip pain or knee pain, it's not necessarily because the issue is in our knee. For example, sometimes we have this big long tendon that runs up the side of our leg called our IT band. And when that gets really tight, it can put additional stress on our knee and on our hips. And the way that we actually relieve that tightness is by stretching out all of the muscles here in our glutes and our hips. And so, it's not necessarily, like I said, how you would think you'd want to go about solving knee pain. And so kind of the same thing. Sometimes when we have pain in our lower back, it can actually be tightness in our hamstrings and in our glutes and other areas. So I'm going to take you through a couple of really good stretches that will not only stretch those lower extremities, but that can help you with low back pain. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first one I'm gonna show you is a really good stretch for not only your glutes, but again, kind of in and around that tensor fascia latte muscle, those inner glute muscles kind of stretching out that IT band. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking our leg and crossing it over like this. We're then gonna take both hands and we're gonna grab the front of our knee like this, kind of like you're giving it a big bear hug. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can do this. So the first is simply pulling the knee up towards the chest like this. I'm going to turn my chair so you can see. When I do this, I don't want to be rounding back in my chair because what that's doing, it's tucking my pelvis under and it's not allowing for those muscles to stretch. So what you want to do while you do this is you want to think about arching that back, kind of pushing the belly button forward, thinking about lifting that tailbone. And that's going to really help you get a nice deep stretch all down through there. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can think about taking that knee and pulling it more across the body, so opposite knee to opposite shoulder. So here, I'm trying to pull it more diagonally than straight up towards my chest. So either of those are good ways to target those muscles. And again, you always want to do it on both sides. But I'm already in position, so I'm going to go right into the next one. For this next one, we're going to target your piriformis muscle. And that is one of those muscles that's deeper inside, inside your hip. It connects from the inside of your hip to your sacrum, which is the bottom part of that spine. And when it gets really tight, it can cause low back pain, it can cause hip pain, and actually it can also contribute to sciatica, which is that kind of shooting numbness that some of us will feel down our leg, basically. So here's how we're gonna stretch that. You're gonna take that leg, you're keeping it on top, but you wanna slide it over so that the ankle and the foot are more on top of that bottom leg. So you should kind of have a little triangle going on here. You can do this one of two ways, and I'll show you both of them. The first is simply taking that hand and pressing that knee down. So you're rotating that knee down. You might feel a bit of a stretch and a pull through here. You mainly want to feel it kind of deep in that hip. If you're feeling it more in the knee, then the second approach will be better for you. And this is personally my preference. You're gonna grab the front of that leg with both hands. I'm gonna sit up nice and tall. And keeping a flat back, I'm gonna pull myself forward until I feel that stretch in the hip. So again, if I were to turn sideways, I want my pelvis to be leaning forward, right? We don't just wanna be rounding our back because again, then the muscles that we're trying to stretch aren't actually moving, right? So again, think belly button forward, right? You're pushing that belly button forward, you're trying to get a flat back all the way down, and you'll feel that deep in the hip. Should have mentioned this earlier, but all of these stretches you wanna hold for about 20 seconds. If we don't hold the stretch for a decent amount of time, 
then we're not going to really hang on to the benefits of that stretch, right? The muscles won't actually kind of get any lasting relief from it. So you want to hold for about 20 seconds. So those are the first two. Both again are kind of designed to hit those glutes and inner glutes up in there. So the third stretch I'm going to take you through is designed to target the hamstrings and that's that muscle group here on the back of your leg. So when the hamstrings get really tight because they're attached kind of again in back behind the knee and then up in the pelvis, they can kind of pull our pelvis under like this and again that can give me some low back issues. We're going to start by scooching all the way forward to the edge of our seat and we're going to straighten our legs so that the heel is on the floor, the toes are up and the knee is straight. If you're sitting too far back in your chair like this, your thigh is going to get kind of caught on the chair. You won't be able to get your knee all the way straight. So that's why scooching forward is really what we want to do here. There are a number of different ways that you can do the arms. I'll show you my two that I do most regularly. So the first is simply reaching for the toe. Keeping a flat back, because again, we don't want to round the back. We want the pelvis to move. We're going to lean forward keeping that knee straight, keeping the toe up, and as soon as I start to feel that stretch up the back of my leg, that's where I want to stop and hold it. The one thing I caution people about with the reaching is people think the goal is to touch my toe, and so instead of focusing on the stretch, they focus on the toe and they will bend the knee to get down there. And that kind of defeats the purpose. What I like to have people do instead to kind of take away, you know, the temptation of bending the knee is taking both hands and putting them on your hips. Same exact thing, you're going to lean forward and you're going to stop when you feel that stretch up the back of the leg. This one also helps to keep your body more square and again it helps take away that temptation of bending the knee to touch the toe. But you don't want to go further than you're able to because again the point of stretching is to help increase that range of motion. So you want to go through your full range and then once you start to feel like you're pushing past that range, that's when you start to feel the stretch, that's where we want to hold it and let those muscles sit for about 20 seconds. Those are the three that I'm going to leave you with today. We've got two good glute stretches, one really good one for the hamstring. Again, you want to do everything on both sides. It is not uncommon for us to feel like we have more flexibility on one side than the other. And all that means is that on the side that maybe we're not quite as flexible on, spend a little extra time there. We want to try to make our bodies as symmetrical and as even as possible when it comes to stretch and strength. So I hope that these are helpful. I hope that you're able to use them at home to maybe provide your muscles with some relief, get rid of some of that pain you might be feeling down in the hips, the knees, the low back. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wellness Wednesday and we'll see you here again next week. Thank you.